We have been making our way slowly along the Yucatan coastline, just testing out life aboard our 40-foot vessel, waiting for high tide to arrive so that we could exit this really shallow but beautiful little anchorage named Rio Lagartos. I thought about cleaning the boat bottom for about a minute, but chickened out as soon as my toes hit the water. I don't want to go in the water. It's called Rio Lagartos. There's some stuff in the rudder. Is the crocodile gonna bite my butt? We didn't really want to leave this wonderful oasis located in the crack along the shallow coastline. But alas, the weather was changing, and we would really have a difficult time leaving here in a couple days from now and fighting against wind and current to get to Isla Mujeres. Early the next morning, at high tide and with very little wind, we exited the harbor. Slow and steady, the depth looked much less scary this time around, with about a meter of water under our keel. Much better, much more wiggle room. With all the over-ripened bananas on board, it was time for mashed banana pancakes, Yucatan style, made with corn flour. And then chocolate spread. Moving very slowly without a drop of wind in our mainsail, Robbie tried his luck with semi-casting and semi-jigging fishing, because trolling at less than three knots was not attracting any bites. because I can't see the chop on it with that. We're just waiting for the breeze to fill in. We we're expecting it a little earlier. Any time now. This time we prepared, we went way out to give ourselves a good angle to come back down towards the peninsula with the right ankle we get three knots with our engine just three knots 3.6 this point i think we can get more rpms the average like average. yes the it can technically we can technically get three and a half knots with zero breeze and zero wave Yes, with it, with zero resistance, we can get 3.5 knots. The fuel leak is, is pretty serious. And the fuel worse. leak. But those two separate things. Right? Yeah, we have to fix the fuel leak first. And then once the fuel leak is lit, then we have to see if we can stop the oil leaks. I don't know how. I recorded the forecast on my phone. A little screenshot that uh, runs as a movie and just remind... Yeah, because we're not the Starlink types uh, as of right now. And it looks like we're going to have good sailing wind until early morning, early Monday morning. So into tonight, at least until the middle of the night, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Our goal basically is to not turn on the engine again. If we're getting pushed back more by the current than we are making headway, that's pretty much why we're going to turn on the engine. It's kind of a disaster to turn it on. It's spraying oil 
as it runs. It's spraying diesel as it runs. Uh, the water, the regular water that comes out of the the stuffing box is just mixing and making a nice slime. I need to buy some baby diapers to soak it all up. Yeah, we're gonna try and not turn it on at all. Bilge mayo. Yeah, it turns into bilge mayo. Turns, turns into bilge mayo. I mean, we could try putting up the Genoa until like four o'clock. So heavy that Genoa, it's like. We've made the calculation. Okay, we can travel uh, an extra knot. For two hours, it'll give us two more nautical miles. This window, don't stop, no salt water. But when it's closed, I mean. Was it dipping it when it was closed? Yep. And this one, don't stop, no salt water. Afternoon snack time. With no fish in sight, what we hoped would be a ceviche simply turned into another pico or salad again. With totopos or corn chips. I had after the buoy for two days. He told me there was more Dorado under that buoy than we could pass. Is he making your own for you? Yeah, kind of. I'm not very comfortable. Dog's taking up the whole bench. We might have wind or we might not have wind as we head closer to land. And depending on whether we have wind or not, we, we continue plodding along or we make a stop. Yeah, when you don't have self-steering, it, it really takes it out. It's You gotta have one person or the other at all times. Even though we've rigged up the, the rope, we really can't leave the tiller for more than five seconds. It's been working well to, to make the stops. The only problem is, is that it's taken a friggin' long time. 200 miles is taken a week. <laughs> one rest day, one full rest day in Rio Lagartos. The rope holds the tiller in place in the center well. When the sails are nice and balanced, steering only requires pushing or pulling very slightly, but keeping on course even in these very good conditions took a surprising amount of energy from us. As the sun went down, we were both feeling very tired and wondering whether the wind was going to continue into the night. 
It didn't this time around, so we dropped anchor and spied on the wildlife around us with the underwater light. Oh wow, look at the rope. Oh! Did I hit the boat? Did I, the guy jumped on deck. If the net wasn't here, we would have had one on deck. Can you smell it? I can smell this. He hit the side of the boat. I can smell him. Last night we sailed until we just ran out of wind. Ravi like literally piled the anchor down and now it's pretty rolly and I'm going to take this time to jump in the water before the wind comes up again. In the time that we spent in Yucapitan Harbor, after launching from the boatyard a couple months ago, we now discovered a fair amount of growth. With some abrasive scrubbies, we managed to get it all clean, although a disappointing amount of hard anti-fouling also came off. Trying to get fuel flowing through the engine again because you ran it and it ran so well that it ran itself dry without us realizing it. It stopped uh, the tube. The, the pipe wasn't in there. But the, the, the propeller is not the wrong size for this engine. I was looking at the pitch and the propeller is very small. It's like 13 or 12 a pitch or 11 a pitch on the propeller. Now, second try starting the engine after sailing off the anchor. What a difference cleaning the bottom and the propeller made. We were steaming ahead at 6.5, sometimes 7 knots, with a little help from the sails. This was the fastest we'd been able to travel so far with this boat. Cleaning the bottom earlier in this trip would have saved us a fair amount of time, and probably a little fuel as well. Several hours later, we were arriving at Isla Mujeres, after one more shallow scare with the reef at its northern end. But now we were back in the familiar harbor. We checked for a space along the right side and then turned around to try and squeeze in on the left side, closer to the shore. We tried to tuck in among the decommissioned ferries. But when I went down into the engine room to put it into reverse gear as Robbie was preparing to drop the anchor, I couldn't get the gear shifter to budge. One last sketchy moment with the temperamental diesel just to finish our trip. Here in Isla Mujeres Anchorage, I don't worry about crocs so much. Instead, I know a couple of big barracuda lurking around. We check the anchor.
prepared to go back into civilization. Assembled my bicycle on the shore and made my way to the grocery store. Even though it seems to be busier every time we come more and more tourists, more and more traffic. Isla Mujeres is still a pretty easy going place in Mexico, beautiful of course, and I love it every time we visit. There's also another grocery store in the opposite direction, slightly further from the anchorage. But it usually has a larger selection of fresh produce and goods. What would we be doing at Isla Mujeres now? Well, we had a growing list of projects to tackle now that we had completed our first shakedown cruise after leaving the boatyard. 